Chapter Three of Child's New Storybook. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Dr. Heather and By in Carrollton, Georgia, in October two thousand and eight. A Child's New Storybook, or Tales and Dialogues for Little Folks. I'll watch thy dawn of joys and mould thy little hearts to duty. I'll teach thee truths as I behold thy faculties, like flowers unfold, in intellectual beauty. CHAPTER Three, ROBERT AND JOHN One fine May morning Robert and John were told by their mamma to go to school. So they put on their caps, and having kissed their mamma, were soon on their way. Now first they had to pass through a pleasant lane, with tall elm-trees on one side, and a hawthorn hedge on the other, then across two fields, then through a churchyard, and then up a little grove, at the end of which was a schoolhouse. But they had not gone more than half the way down the lane, when John began to loiter behind, to gather wild flowers, and to pick up smooth little pebbles, which had been washed clean by the rain, while Robert walked on reading his book. At last John, calling after his brother, said, "'I do not see what is the use of going to school this fine morning. Let us play truant.' "'No,' replied Robert, "'I will not take pleasure.' for which I know I must suffer in after-hours. "'Nonsense about that,' said John. "'I will enjoy myself while I can.' "'And so will I,' replied Robert. "'And I shall best enjoy myself by keeping a good conscience, and so I will go to school.' "'Very well, Robert. Then tell the master that I am ill and cannot come,' said John. "'I shall do no such thing, John,' replied Robert. "'I shall simply tell the truth, if I am asked why you are not with me.' "'Then I say you are very unkind, Robert,' said John. "'You will not go with me, then?' asked Robert, with a tear in his sweet blue eye. "'I shall go up into this tree,' said John, "'and so good morning to you.' Poor Robert gave one long look at his brother, heaved a deep sigh, and went on his way. And naughty John sat in the tree and watched him, after he had crossed the stile, walk along the smooth broad pathway that led through the field, and stoop to read a verse on a tombstone, and then take out his kerchief, wipe a tear from his eye, look upward to the cloudless heaven, and then he was gone. And John sat still in the tree, and he said to himself, Oh, that I were as good as my brother, but I will go down and follow him. So he went down from the tree, leapt over the stile, ran along the fields, and did not stay to gather one cowslip, though each one made him a golden bow as he passed. And when he went into the schoolroom, though he was only five minutes later than his brother, he told his master the whole truth, and how naughty he would have been, had it not been for a kind little thought, which came into his mind, and bade him to try to be as good as his brother. End of chapter 3